Hello, YouTube. This time we're back and we're talking a little bit about automation, uh, automated discovery, if you will. And uh, let me go uh, straight to the chase and let's cover the problem. So let's say that I have a GNS3 network here. So this network is virtualized. I have a bunch of iOS, uh, plain iOS devices. Again, uh, I want to essentially be able to, given a device R whatever, so it could be R1, R2, R4, whichever one in this topology, I want to be able to essentially do the following. Let's open a Telnet connection to it, an SSH. Uh, let's enter a show command here. Let's do a show CDP name. And this is actually on this device, R1, showing me the neighbors. In this case, R1 is neighbor with R2 and is neighbor with R3. Um, it could be that it's different. It could be that I have connected the devices differently. It could be that the topology is much, much bigger. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that I want for the, prob uh, for the current problem to be able to log into R1, run this command, discover a couple of new routers. And based on the routers that I discover, I want to be able to, let's say, add them on my execution list, if you will, and proceed to run the exact same command on them. So, for example, I now know that R1 is connected to R2 and R3. Let's connect to R2 now. And if I do the same thing, show CDP neighbors on R2, I know that R2 is connected to R1 because of this line here and also because of the topology. But in addition, R2 is also connected to R4. So by doing this process over and over, let's say that I move on to router three this time, uh, show CDP neighbors. By doing this process iteratively, one iteration at a time, I'm able to eventually, if all goes well, map the whole network, right? So here I am on router three running a show CDP neighbors. I can see that R3 is connected to R1, but we already know that. And in addition, we already see that R3 is connected to R5, which is down here, and R6, which is up here. If I keep executing this all the way, show CDP neighbors on R6, for example, I get that R6 connects to R7. And if I try running the same thing on R7, I, I'm not going to get anyone new. So I'm not going to discover any new router. I only discover router six, which I already know. But the point is that since I'm not finding anyone new at a given iteration, this means that I should probably stop my lookup, which means that I essentially map the whole network, right? Because once I find R7 or whatever is the device that uh, at the end of the day doesn't discover anyone new, it probably means that uh, either CDP is m m not really well configured or more, most likely that we essentially don't have any more neighbors to display. Now, it's fine to do this manually for seven devices, but what I want to do now is to do this automatically. And in addition, I want to not only do it automatically where I discover everyone in the network using CDP, I also want to be able to generate a nice looking diagram afterwards. So this is what we'll be looking uh, right now with the code that I wrote using Nornier essentially. So keep this topology in mind. Let's switch to the terminal here. And uh, I have a project which is called Nornir Mapper. This will be available in the description. And the idea is that this code implements the algorithm, if you will, that I just shown you. So it starts on one router. It keeps executing and discovering new neighbors on, uh, on its adjacent CDP neighbors. And eventually it tries to fill out the entire network. And once it stops finding new neighbors, it will essentially stop execution altogether. So uh, here is the code. Let's look at the configuration for Nornir. Uh, the configuration is actually done in line. So let's look into the main file here. Uh, for the configuration, I'm initializing Nornir with simple inventory. If you know from, from my previous videos, you know that this essentially means a YAML based inventory. Um, in addition, we have a host file, which is uh, only the host file. In fact, we're not separating into groups. And this host file is going to contain only one router because we start from router one, as an example. Now, I'm also running with uh, 20 parallel threads. You already know what that means from previous videos. And uh, let's not focus too much on the code down here. Let's take a look at the inventory. Excuse me. The inventory is essentially one device, which is router one right here. And this device has a username of Cisco and a password of Cisco. 
I am, of course, assuming that everyone has the same username and the password on this particular network over here. It could not be the case, uh, but for, for simplification purposes, I'll just assume that everyone has the same one. And I'm also assuming that it's uh, Cisco IOS based, given I'm using CDP. CDP is a Cisco proprietary uh, protocol, of course, which means that uh, only Cisco devices will be supported here. Now, in addition to an inventory, I also have a plugin with a task, which is what actually does the CDP mapping. So it's using TTP, which is essentially a parser. It sends this command here, show CDP neighbors detail, which is like, uh, very similar to the command I shown you, show CDP neighbor detail, except that it gives a more verbose output. So it gives uh, in a different format, the IP address for my neighbor. This is announced via CDP, uh, some platform information as well, the interfaces. And the interfaces are actually good that they are being advertised because we're going to use them to compile the, the diagram. Now, uh, this is just uh, for more context. So we're running show CDP neighbors detail on each of the routers in our inventory using Admico. And then we're applying a TTP parser to collect the, the values. And the values of interest are for a given neighbor, we are collecting its name its IP address, you can see, in fact, let me maybe share the screens here. These entries on the template here on the left, they actually map to the entries on the right here, because these are the fields I'm collecting. So after device ID here, I collect the neighbor name. After the IP address, I collect the actual IP address after this word here. And after this word here, platform, I collect this whole thing until I get to capabilities, after which I capture device capabilities. I'm also collecting the interfaces. So the local interface, in this case on router one, is fast Ethernet 01. And the outgoing interface or the remote interface is going to be here after this port ID. Now, this is how I am collecting the data. I'm using a combination of NetMiko and TTP. Let's move into uh, the main algorithm now. So essentially, this algorithm begins here, where I set a length on my inventory. I grab the existing Nornir instance. And remember, it starts with one device. Um, I set in an auxiliary variable here. And I keep incrementing that variable along with, uh, let's say, the discoveries that I do on the network. So for a given iteration, what all of this ugly block is doing at the end of the day is it's essentially um, updating the inventory if it finds new hosts in the inventory and then checking to see if the um, amount of hosts changed compared to last time. At the end of the day, what this is going to do is uh, on the first iteration, we have router one only. We discover two new routers. So we now have a three inventory, uh, three router inventory, let's say. And um, excuse me. And uh, on the next execution, we are actually going to now execute the same thing again, but for R1, R2, and R3, which means that we will be discovering R4, R6, and R5. So we increase the inventory size to now have six routers. And in the last iteration, we run again uh, the same command for everyone. On these upper guys, we don't discover anything. On R6, we do discover R7. And on the last iteration, we run with now an inventory of seven. And once we don't find anyone new, we know that we finished executing, uh, let's say, our little algorithm. And we essentially return a network that has these seven routers. And we draw a diagram. So let's see how that looks like. So here, all of this block is essentially for updating the information on the routers and the inventory, upgrading the stages so that we can re report how many stages it took, and then updating the length of the inventory. Finally, we essentially, uh, this is where we use a library called N2G, and I can even show it on GitHub. It is a diagramming library, so it essentially produces the XML that you can use to import into draw.io and draw a 
diagram programmatically, let's say. And this is what we're going to do essentially with the information we gathered. So we initialized a, a diagram, let's say, and we're going to put all the hosts we found together with the interfaces uh, linking each of the hosts. And then we just dump those into a file. Now, let me try running this. And notice that currently I have these files on my directory. Let me enter. So it finished the first stage. It ran against one router. It finished the second stage. So it found router two and router three, as in here. It's now running the third stage where it found six routers. So it's here. And on the last stage, it actually ran against all seven routers and didn't update any information. So that's where it stopped. And here's the results, right? So for example, router one, we see it has two neighbors. And importantly, we know the local interface and the remote interface for each. So these two neighbors, router two has two neighbors too. Router three, if we look back here, has three neighbors. So router six, router five, and router one. And you can see all of this represented as structured data because we parsed it using C, uh, TTP. Now, this also generated a little diagram. So let me now show the diagram. Let's do an LS first. The diagram is here. Uh, let me try importing this into Drawio. So let's go to the web here. Here I open Drawio. I am going to open an existing diagram from my device, which means it will target my file system. And I already set it to the directory where I have my project in. And here you can see that I have a Drawio file. Let's open it. Now, right now they are all bunched together. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Arrange and I'll do Layout, for example, Horizontal Flow. And because I didn't specify any coordinates when I when I created this diagram, I just said which routers link to which. Uh, they were all bunched up together. But by using the arrange, I can then kind of separate them in a way that makes it more readable. But you can see that programmatically speaking, what I was able to do was essentially to look at this network here. Based on one of the routers, I discovered the whole thing while keeping some metadata in check. And afterwards, I serialized that information into a draw IO diagram. And now I have essentially an automated way of specifying one device and compiling the whole network topology, if you will. So I can even try to compare. Let me do this exercise here. You can see that router one, fast Ethernet zero one on router one connects to fast Ethernet zero zero on router two. And similarly, Fast Ethernet 1.0 on router 1 connects to Fast Ethernet 0.0 on router 3. So again, the interface is matched. I got the interconnection between the routers, and I'm also tagging the different interfaces. And uh, if this got your attention, uh, this is where I show the code. So uh, you can look it up on GitHub. I'll be adding the link uh, in the description. This is Nornir Mapper. This is a little script that I wrote in my spare time. And you can use it to kickstart your own projects. Again, this is more to showcase what you can achieve using not only Nornir, but also this new library here, N2G, uh, that you can make very nice looking programmatic diagrams with, right? So thank you very much, guys. This was it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.